Good morning. This is Andy's Fishing and Wild Cook. We are on a boat in paradise. I'm using the big boat as a mothership and the dinghy to go crabbing and fishing and exploring. It's day two. I actually woke up with a splitting headache. I uh, forgot my hat and yeah, I got pretty, I think I, think I got sunstroke yesterday. But yeah, today's turning it on very nicely. There's not a breath of wind. Sun's only just popped up behind me. And we had an amazing day yesterday. Got a whole bunch of mangrove jack, uh, caught a big barramundi, and a couple of mud crabs as well. Could be dolphins. There's actually been some dolphins here this morning. I did see a mother and calf over there, and a couple more, possibly in a different pod um, over that way. So yeah, the bay is full of life. I think we'll, we'll head over into the mangroves. Um, yesterday I heard a bunch of big fish splashing in there, but I got in there too late yesterday. I had to make a makeshift hat. You'll see that later on. It's pretty funny. <laughs> anyway, I'll have some breakfast and then we'll get moving. Let's go catch some crabs. Woo! what I like to do. What have we got? Oh, we've got a cod, a black spot cod. Okay, we'll let him go. Oh, and he fell out. Oh, just getting the boat ready to put the, the pot on and he, he swam out. So yesterday the pots were only in for a few hours. Um, these ones have been in all night and I'm surprised we didn't get any crabs in that one because that one had a nice crab in it yesterday. And we've got absolutely nothing. Huh. I've decided to put the pots out wide now. So if I want to get them at low tide I can get them. Plus there was no crabs over there last night so give it a shot out here. Okay, pot number four. This one I had high hopes for yesterday, but didn't get anything. Today this would be the most promising one I would think. Do we have anything? Absolutely nothing, how does that work? In this one I'm adding the barramundi head from yesterday. See if that helps. This one had three crabs in it yesterday, but no bait left. So we'll see what's going on here. I'm going to say nothing, but you never know. Yeah, nothing, just a half-eaten chicken bone. In this one, we're putting half the barramundi frame. Hopefully we can get one or two more crabs today. Yesterday when I was putting the crab pots in the water, there was a lot of splashing going on here, and it was probably a little bit later than this, but yesterday I got here too late and the water was too low. I caught one nice mangrove jack, but all the bigger fish had already moved out. So today I'm fishing topwater frog. Um, that's so I can skip it in there as far as where the fish are. And on the other rod, I've got a sugar pen 120 floating. So if there's any areas where I think I can use the sugar pen, um, that's not too snaggy, I'll, I'll shoot that in there as well. Do you like my hat? <laughs> I had to make this yesterday because I've literally forgot my hat. I was going to do three days out here, but oh, I'll see how, how burnt I get today. There is a spot I want to explore later on. I've never done it before. Um, it'll be on foot and it should be quite interesting. So yeah, see how this goes first and then try this other spot. First cast. I'm a little too far out, but I'll give it a shot. Yeah, I need to be a bit closer than that. Now the fish haven't started making any noise yet. Yesterday it was just boof, 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 boof all along here. So we'll just have to wait a little while. I think when the tide starts going out a little bit, that's better, right under there. Oh, that was a flash. Not on my lure, just out the front here. The challenge will be trying to pull a fish out of this stuff. So when I'm using the oars, I'm in stealth mode and it's really quiet. It's really good for fishing. But the other thing that's really good for fishing is how stable this is with the aluminium floor. Let me show you. Hopefully I don't fall in. But I can stand right on the edge of the boat and it just doesn't move. 
It is so good. Anyway, let's see. That's where I gotta get. I gotta get right in there. Oh yeah, it's over a few branches. <laughs> Here's a good open spot. Get right in front of that green mangrove. There we go. Perfect. Oh, if there's a jack there, he'll eat that. Oh, right in front of that green mangrove. Come on. Oh, oh that was a big jack. Oh. Don't know if he missed it or I missed him. Let's see, I think he went this way. Oh yeah, I can see him sitting there. Oh, another one, big one, that's a big one. Oh, that is a big one. Oh, there's a whole hot heap of them. Oh, look at them all. Look at them, look at them here. <laughs> this gotta be 20 jacks. Oh, that is cool. Oh, they don't seem to be worried about the boat. And I think that plastic is gone. Let me get this guy in. Oh, he's a big fish. Yeah, they're just swimming around under the boat. Yeah, the plastic is gone, so they'll be floating. Or oh, someone's eating it. Probably both. Oh, they're still sitting there. There's still jacks. Oh, there's, there's the plastic. Oh, I've got to get it. Damn it. Now I'm right in the spot. There we go. Ugh. So probably what happened is one of the other fish grabbed this and just pulled it out of that one's mouth. All right, let's get out of here. And then we'll let this guy go and hopefully these guys will settle down and we can catch some more. I've seen a lot of turtles in here, so hopefully I'll look like a, a massive turtle. Whoops, that's no good. Wasn't watching where I was going. Because yeah, the turtles just swim through here and eat. And I kind of look like a big turtle with my two little flippers out the side. The next cast will tell if they're spooked. My guess is they will be. Let's see, he is... Yeah, he'd be legal. Just, probably just legal. Yeah. 35, 36? Could possibly 37. I, I've been having a tendency to go under with my measurements. There we go. Beautiful mangrove jack. First one of the morning. <laughs> I reckon he is legal. But yeah, we've got barramundi. We don't need... Don't need too many more fish. Hey, okay, let you go. Slide it nice and gentle. There you go. <laughs> We're drifting back into this spot, so I want to paddle out and uh, give another go. Put my hat back together. It's just a um, bit of foam with a hole cut in it. Oh, fishy going off. Um, and a tea towel to, to cover up the hole. There, a little clean fish by the look of it. Okay, same spot. Let's see if they're still there. No, I think they're gone. Yeah, driving a boat straight over the top and yanking one of their buddies out of the water. Probably not the best thing in the world. Oh, got him, Barramundi! <laughs> oh, it's just about to give up. Oh. oh, he's dragging me around everywhere. Okay. Oh, almost got me in there. Oh. Oh, get out, get out, get out, get out. Oh, he's around those mangroves. Nice and gentle. He's right on that mangrove now. This is where a single hook actually helps. Oh, you're gonna have to swim backwards, buddy. Oh, I don't have a net. He's just making it worse. Might try and, oh, and he snapped me off. Oh, get the plastic back, but I lost the hook. Oh, that was unexpected. About a Monday. That was cool. Give me a plastic. So I reckon the fish are starting to fire up now. He was out, uh, I wouldn't say he was out in the open, but I might try that other lure now. Because the big duck is so small and I don't have an electric motor, it's really handy having the oars or paddles, well, they're oars, stuck to the side of the boat, low profile, and I can just really quietly, <laughs> I'm talking a bit loud, <laughs> I can really quietly just back up a little bit, change spots a little bit, and then have another cast. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. You had two goes at it. Oh. Oh, there he is. Little Trevally. 
Do you remember how I said there's turtles all through the trees here? That's one right there. I think he knows I'm here. He's got his head cocked to the side. Hey? We're gonna get right on top of him. There's my lure. And there's a turtle. Hey little fella, hope you're not stuck. No, nah, you wouldn't be stuck, would you? We'll see if he can... Yeah, he should be able to get out. Yeah, there he goes. Okay. Hey. That is so close. Wow. Ha! Let's see if there's any fish in here. Let's try a different spot. It hasn't really worked along here, so... Yeah, we'll just head to another spot. And I've just remembered there's a snag up here where I got busted off many moons ago. Let's see if I can get some uh, payback. <laughs> I had someone comment and said that the aluminium in the dinghy would be really hot, and it's, it's actually really cool because aluminium disperses heat and it's a double layer of aluminium, so it, it cools really, really well. It's middle of summer, midday, and yeah, beautiful and cool. Oh, that was way in the back there. And he got it, oh, two hits. I think they were different fish. Let's see if we can get in there again. Oh, that's way in there. Yep, oh, missed it. I can see him sitting there. Oh, come on. Oh, we're stuffed. Oh, three hits, I saw him sitting there. Oh, I'm not going to get him. Somewhere in here. Let's see. Yeah, I think the mangoes were just too dense for him to, to get accurate and whack it. For Fisher Sugar Pen, you cast it out, pass where you want to go, and then tap, 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 tap. You want to just keep tapping it, but you got to do it the right amount, oh, the right timing, because you want that lure to go this way, this way, this way, this way, this way. I've got some brim following. A lot of the brim, brim are on the lure now. So you want to zigzag the lure along the surface. Let's have a go at the shark. That's in front of him. He's following it. Yep, yep, he's on it. He's on it. Do, 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 do. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, got it. Oh, he had it. <laughs> and the boat just scared him. Oh, got another shark following. Come on, shark. Come on. Here he comes. Here he comes. Here he comes. Right to the boat. Oh, he got it. He got it. Oh. <laughs> Oh, and he spooked. Oh, mangrove jack. Oh, had two goes at it. I know where he's sitting. He didn't hit the hooks, so I reckon we'll catch a mangrove jack this cast. Oh, yeah, it's in the wrong spot. Yep, and he's on it. Oh, he hit it again. I think we might have missed our chance. Oh, got one. Got one. Yes, mangrove jack. That's a different one. That was a different spot. Oh, almost got me in. Come on out. Nice. <laughs> I'm actually on my way to, to where I'm going. I can't help fishing spots that look good. Nice fish. Come on up, buddy. There we go. Beautiful mangrove jack. Hey. Oh, let you go. Hey, don't warn the others yet. There you go. Hey, he's gonna hide under the boat. <laughs> that was cool, that Jack. First I thought there was just one and then pff, got hammered. Who thinks we can go in there and get another one? I reckon we'll give it a go. And also let me know in the comments if, if you like these side trips, because my mission is actually something completely different, like walking around the rocks and, and, and fish, fishing off the rocks. So let me know if you, if you like these diversions or if you'd rather see me go straight into, yeah, 
the, the thing that I tell you I'm gonna do. <laughs> Let's see if we can get another one. What do you reckon? Can we get another one? That's the lure that got him, a Sugar Pen 120 floating. And you don't have to spend heaps on a decent rod. These Atomic Arrows, this is an offshore seven foot medium heavy. Um, they're great quality for a reasonable price. And yeah, I like them. Let's try that same spot again. Oh, big one, big one. He just nailed me. Oh, oh that is a big one. Oh, he's got friends following too. At least six or seven other jacks. Oh, he almost, another one almost grabbed it. This is a big fish. Look at him, they're still there. Oh, I gotta get out of here. Oh, look at that, I managed to get another one. I reckon they're a bit, a bit spooked now, but we might try again. Oh, he's a big fish. I'm gonna have to get a glamour shot with this guy, I think. If he doesn't drop off. Oh yeah. Oh, that is monster. <laughs> oh, look at him. Now, whenever I catch a fish with, with a, a lure that's got two hooks on it, I always use the lip grippers. These are um, plastic and I reckon they do less damage to the fish. They don't put a hole in the bottom of the jaw and they don't break teeth off. So if I, if I have a choice, always use the cheap plastic ones rather than the really expensive um, with the, the narrow pointy stainless ones. Definitely got to get a glamour shot with that guy. Get a quick measurement. 26. Oh, he's like 48. 48, 49. <laughs> Beautiful fish. Hey, and here's me thinking there was just like one in there. <laughs> what an amazing fish. 40, somewhere between 47 and 49, I reckon. Beautiful. I'll let him go. Oh. <laughs> Oops, we're in the rocks here. I think part of the reason I can catch multiple jacks if I don't drift over the top of them is because rowing like this is um, yeah, much quieter. Even, it's even quieter than using an electric motor because I know fish react to electric motor. Let's see if they'll come out again. There was a bunch in there, at least half a dozen. And as soon as it hit the water last time, they were on it, oh, and they're on it, oh, they're all on it. Oh, I thought I had two then for a second. I did have two. I've only got one now. <laughs> Oh, I've got to put that all back. Look at that. Nice and easy. Pop out. What a spot. Okay. I'm not going to muck around with this guy too long. I want to catch a couple more. Come on, fish. There we go. He's... Yeah, he'd be uh, either just legal or just under. I'm going to call him. Don't chomp me. Ooh, don't do that. Please don't do that. Hey, off you go, buddy. There you go. Woo! <laughs> Let's do it again. Okay, if you watch my last video, oh, something in there. If you watch my last video, you'll know that I tried to get a surface strike and I spent like two hours. It's, oh, I just saw another mangrove jack flash. I spent like two hours trying to film it and I couldn't get one. Here, it's just fish after fish. And it's definitely the sugar pen lure and the clearer water that's, that's doing it. Okay, he just followed that out. I think we might have had, that's the end of them I think, come on, still there, no, yeah once you, oh got him, got him, got him, oh, <laughs> yanked him out, I was going to say once you get a couple, oh, they, they go back home and they make the others a bit shy, oh, but we got another one, oh and there's another one still following, <laughs> Not quite sure what happened there. He might have hit it with his mouth and then his shoulder caught caught the other hook. Hey, off you go. There you go, buddy. Uh, I think we're almost out of fish here, which means we'll move on. But yeah, if you want a jack top water lure, oh, look at the tooth mark there. Um, yeah, the Sugar Pen 120F. I like that color because I can see it. Um, fish like that color because they can see that. <laughs> Beautiful. One more. Let's see. And yeah, really stable to stand up in, even when there's a little bit of chop around. Let's see if there's another one. 
Ooh, right in the zone, the splash zone. Oh, got him, got him, got him, got him. Oh. Tell you what, it's nothing but jacks. I expected some cods, but we just got another jack. Oh, it's cast for cast in here. I think we'll just, oh, 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 I was just gonna drop you off. Hey, little fella, come on. Come on, little fella. That deck is so cool. Hey. Hey, off you go. There you go. If you've been paying attention, you'll notice that the um, the fish are actually getting smaller. So the, the big ones are more wary and the little ones are more aggressive. And I think this might be it. Yeah, no one came out. No. That's it. This is where they were sitting. Right here. Doesn't look like much, but plenty of fish. Let's go for a walk. Pretty sure the tide's still going out. But we'll tie the boat on regardless. We're on this deserted beach and my plan is to walk up the rocks and see what I can catch. I've never fished here before. Um, I don't think I've even fished along here in a boat. So this will be, yeah, interesting, exploring, fun. And I just wanted to give Big Duck a shout out. So far, I've had this maybe, I think two to three months. No, probably a little bit longer anyway. Um, yeah, really happy with it. It's 50 kilos, 3.3 meters long. There's, there's smaller versions. The aluminum floor is cooler than the sides are. Now that, that's, that's pretty cool. Um, this one's rated to a 15 and I've got a 15 on here. And when I'm racing along, I wear that. That's a um, cut off uh, lanyard. Because when you give this thing throttle, the boat literally wants to jump out of the water. Um, the, the, the performance to weight ratio is, is pretty darn good. I showed you yesterday, at half throttle, I'm doing somewhere between 18 and 24 kilometers an hour, I'm just skipping along using almost no petrol. They're very handy and you don't even need a trailer. This will fit in the back of a car. I'm hoping for mangrove jack, and then at some point we're gonna switch over to coral trout. That's my prediction. I'll show you what I'm taking. I've got a box of lures. Um, there's sugar pens in there. There's slim twitches. Uh, I'm not gonna use a squid jig there. I've got a spool of 40 pound leader. My cutters, pliers, uh, lip grips. And then the atomic arrow is the one I've been using all, all day, seven foot. And I've got a yeah, sugar pen on there. Although I think I'll probably change that when I find a spot. So far here, not a lot of structure so I'm actually just going to skip quite a lot of this until I see something that looks looks pretty interesting so while I've never fished along this stretch here I did do a clean up once and I'm just looking I haven't seen any rubbish yet there's just nothing so it looks like my clean up has lasted that was probably oh, two years ago now, at least a year and a half, possibly two years. So yeah, that's the first tiny bit of plastic here. This little, little cross hatchy thing. Other than that, the beach is, uh, yeah, really clean. That's so amazing to see. Walked a fair bit already. The big boat is way over there. And there's a nice point coming up here. I reckon we'll start there. Oh, hello, we've got a glove. What is that? That looks like a spear fishing glove, neoprene. There you go. Looks like someone had their finger bitten off. <laughs> Probably just tall. Anyway, that's a cool find. It only took me an hour of walking or longer, about three kilometers. I know why I've never done this before, because it's a long walk. The um, the coastline here is all pretty much the same. If you have a look behind me here, it's all just a little bit of rock and then a, um, a corridor of, of seaweed. I just do crazy things sometimes. This is one of them. Middle of the day, it's probably at 1.30, something like that. I enjoy fishing out of a boat, but I also really enjoy 
fishing from the land and here's our first couple of rocks no enough on that side here's something interesting i'll give you two seconds three seconds to tell me what it is what do you reckon it is it's a chest plate off a turtle that's his um sternum there and then that goes out and then he's I think his flipper is there. This is like his ribs, what's left of his ribs. So, yeah, very cool. Poor little guy, didn't make it. Another part of his ribs. He, oh, hang on, is that, that might be his scapula even. Oh, there you go. Oh no, it's just a, yeah, well, their ribs turn into plates and that's what their, yeah, their underside is. So, he didn't make it. Probably, probably more turtle bits all along here. I was just about to move on and I found this. That's definitely bone, turtle bone. I don't know which part that is. Could be part of a flipper or arm or something, leg, who knows. It's, I don't think it's a rib, it's got too much curvature in it. Anyway, let's keep going. I'm starting to think I made a foolish choice. From a distance, these rocks look really good, but up close, I don't know, it just, just doesn't strike me as big fish country. Anyway, I'll have a cast out here. We've got a a rock next to a next to the edge. Good ambush spot. But I'm starting to wonder if I've miscalculated. And this is the reason why I've never fished along here. I wouldn't say that was a pointless exercise because I quite enjoy walking along the foreshore and checking stuff out, but yeah, it wasn't at all what I expected. The um, the water, the structure in the water. Yeah. So I'm going to head back to the dinghy. It's at least three kilometres that way. Um, feeling very knackered. We'll see. Unless there's something really exciting, I'll see you back at the dinghy. But you've got to do these things. You've got to explore because you might find a gem. It's like everything, you know. You Sometimes you get lucky, sometimes you get unlucky. And yeah, I won't be coming back here again. And I know that for sure, so there you go. I'm glad I had a little bit of water left. That was a heck of a walk. Oh, that feels good. Oh, I'd say that was four Ks out and four Ks back. I'm about two kilometers from the boat. The crab pots are all through there. And this thing won't start. I've got fuel. There's plenty, plenty in there. The safety thing's on. It's out of gear. And it just, it won't start. It, it does that, that's all it does. And that, that, it should run. Like it's trying. It just won't. This won't stay going. Oh. Okay, hang on. No, that's it. Oh, oh man. Oh, I think that might be it for the day. I have to row back, literally two kilometers, and pick the crab pots up. Oh, it's good. It's going to take like three or four hours. <sighs> it just won't go. This is going to be a long afternoon. I'm not even at the first crow pot yet. Oh. At least it's an adventure. I'm doing about, I don't know, two kilometers an hour, <laughs> if that. Oh, okay. First crow pot, here we go. Only three more after this. Let's see what we got. Ugh. We've got nothing! Look, nothing! Okay, pod number two. I think, yeah, this one had chicken, and the, the first one I picked up had chicken, and the other two have got um, fish, so that chicken's actually smelling pretty rank at the moment, and I'm not surprised the crabs aren't going in there. Let's see what we've got going on. Yep, nothing. That's expected. 
Okay, I think this one had the... Oh, I think of the back half of the barramundi. So the, the last one has the head. Let's have a look what we got. Nothing! Oh, it doesn't look like it's been touched. I'm now rowing into the wind as well. Oh, boat's about, I don't know, about a kilometre away, I guess. Last pot. Oh, let's see if we got anything. No, nah, nothing at all. Oh, well, I don't have to worry about dealing with crabs. Oh, I almost made it. We made it! Oh, grab it, quick, quick, grab it! Oh. 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 No more, please. I'm well and truly done with the fishing part of this video. I'm gonna see you back in the bush kitchen and then we'll cook up that barramundi. Catch you there. Okay, here we are in the bush kitchen. We've got our piece of barramundi fillet and we're gonna make fish cakes. These are most of the raw ingredients. I've got some panko crumb as well and that'll make it a really nice golden color. First up, we're gonna chop a chili. We'll take out about half the seeds, leave half in there. Just cut that into nice little half slivers. Then usually you want to put in a spring onion or shallot or something like that, but I couldn't find any in two different shops, so I gave up. I'm going to use a green chili, and we'll just take all the seeds out of that so we don't get extra heat. And once again, give that a nice little chop. Then I've got some broccolini. Because we didn't have the spring onions, I want to get a little bit of extra green in there. So we're just going to use part of the stalk. They actually look like, yeah, they look like little spring onions. <laughs> I'm adding one clove of garlic. And give that a really nice fine dice. And then we're on to our beautiful clean barramundi, freshly caught. Here's a little trick for you. If you put a bit of paper, either, yeah, like white, white tea towel thing like this or newspaper onto the chopping board, when I fillet that, it won't slide. To start the filleting off, I like to use a fork and pin the skin down to the cutting board. And skinning fish is really simple. Keep that knife at a, about a 15 or 20 degree angle. And just keep working your way through. There we go. Beautiful, nice fish. And then we want to mince the meat up. So there's just little tiny chunks. You can use a mincer or you can just use a knife. What I do is, is you just cut it into long slivers and then cross cut it the other way and then start hacking it. You can use almost any fish for this. The less desirable a fish, the, the better it is for this because you're not wasting premium quality fish. And there we have our minced fish. So then I'm going to put all those ingredients in a nice big bowl. Crack one egg in there and start mixing it around. You really want to incorporate everything in there. Some salt and pepper and some table salt. That mixture is just a little bit wet, so we're going to put in some just flour. Not too much, just enough to take a bit of that moisture up. Ooh, that smells good. <laughs> I'm gonna try this with wet, wet hands, see if that helps. Grab about a big golf ball size and straighten the panko crumb. Do another one. Give 
give those a flip around. They are quite delicate at this stage. So you have to be a little bit careful, but that is working beautifully. Once again, this is a, a fast, easy recipe that tastes delicious. And if you got kids or you're new to cooking, give this one a go. It's, um, yeah, really good. Fish cakes with barramundi. Whilst I finish these off, I'm going to heat up the broccolini. Now as soon as the broccolini water starts boiling, I'm going to turn the heat off and just let it sit there. And that should cook perfectly whilst we finish off these. And we're done with those. Hopefully they fit in the pan. There we go. Put some rice bran oil in the pan. This is quite high smoking point oil. I think they should all fit in there. I'll just slide them in. Oil is perfect. That, that looks beautiful and it actually you can smell that garlic cooking already this is really easy to cook because when it goes white on the bottom half that means it's time to turn it over we can also see the panko crumb getting brown okay, I think this is the first one in Oh, looking delicious. Just turn the heat down on those just the tiniest little bit. Um, yeah, once the the fish cakes are like half cooked, they you, yeah you, the heat's coming through from the top already. So these are going to be delicious. I reckon they're going to be quite moist, a little bit crunchy on the outside with that breadcrumb. Okay, they look done. Let's have a look. Yep, beautiful. Turn them off. Woo! Cut some lemon. Here are our fish cakes. Beautiful. Yep. Oh, they're delicious. You can hear how crunchy they are. Just by touching them. Ooh. But wait, we're not finished yet. We've got our broccolini. Mm -mm -mm. How good does that look? I'll give you a better look on the other camera. Check that out. Fish cakes with barramundi. So nice. Mm. I think I might go and eat that at the house. To really finish this off, I've got some mayonnaise and sweet chili. Just make a, a nice dipping sauce with that. Give the lemon a little squeeze. Mm, mm, mm. Alrighty. Let's try the first one. I'm just going to have this one. Just with a little bit of lemon on it. They're beautiful and brown, golden brown. They should have a crunch. Mm hmm. Mmm. So fresh tasting. If you do this recipe, definitely put the um, spring onions or some shallots or something in there. Mm, I do think it's missing that. Very mild chili flavour. Definitely not hot. Mm, you can taste the fish. Let's try the sauce. There's a little bit of warmth in there coming through now. But yeah, very comfortable. That sauce adds another layer of complexity. So if you have fish that you don't normally like try fish cakes um, 
just the amount of flavors and yeah it's, it just it just makes any fish I'll put a little timestamp here of how long this actually took me I just want to say a really quick thank you to the supporters that have donated in the last couple of months even though I haven't put out videos I'm still feeling love from you guys so yeah thank you very much and yeah there's going to be more videos coming in the next yeah end of this month maybe what do we got yeah might be a little bit a bit late but next month definitely and I got uh, a couple of friends turning up we might do some videos together we might not we'll see how it goes and those little bits of broccoli stalk just give it that a little bit of texture there's a tiny little crunch every now and then give fish cakes a go they're delicious they're simple they're quick and I'll see you guys next time. Mm -mm. <laughs> if you're still here, I've picked out a special video just for you. Check it out.